grace and peace to you from one who is and who was and who is to come. Now you see, stories like the ones you just heard have given me a bad rap. But if people read their Bibles carefully, they would see that God has given me a job to do. One important enough that God sees to it God's self on occasion. Maybe an illustration is helpful here. Think about building inspectors. Folks who poke around to make sure everything is done properly. That what's on the plan is actually what gets built, plumbed, and wired. Think of me as having that same kind of job. I'm the one who sees if everything in God's creation is going according to plan. In the beginning, God took on quite a building project, and the final piece of the plan was all of you. As best I can understand, being fully aware that no one can really understand what's going on in God's mind, you people were made to live in loving, trusting relationship with God. This is a fine idea, but whether it actually works according to plan has always been another story. Well, almost always, but I'll get to that exception in a minute. Anyhow, God parks Adam and Eve in the garden. They have everything they need to live comfortably, and God doesn't even make them work for it. What a life. God just asks them to remember one thing, a single, solitary notion for them to hold on to. God is God, and they are not. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil had all the stuff in it that God decided that he and he alone would deal with because he was the only one fully capable of handling it. So the practical application of God's one rule was, stay away from that tree. So I said to myself, self, let's see if everything is going according to plan. These folks were created to live in a trusting relationship with God. Let's check and see if they trust God. For reasons I don't quite recall, I thought approaching the woman as a talking snake would be just the right way to handle this job. Oddly enough, Eve was not put off the least little bit by a talking snake. She just chatted away with me. Go figure. She finally mentioned the tree and how they were keeping clear of it. Really, I asked. Did God really say you can't eat any of the fruit in this garden? Of course we can eat it, she said. It's only the fruit from the tree at the center of the garden that we aren't allowed to eat. God says we must not eat it or even touch it or we'll die. Now I saw my opening to see if things would go according to plan. You won't die, I told her. God knows that your eyes will be opened when you eat it. She looked skeptical, so I broke out the heavy artillery in my line of work. This is your chance to be just like God. Before I could slither away, she and her gentleman friend were chopping on the fruit. I guess the chance to be God, whether it's a lie or not, it's pretty hard for people to pass up. As you can clearly see, I found unmistakable evidence that things were not going according to God's plan. Now, when the next big inspection came along, God decided to handle it for himself. As it turns out, this Abraham character did pass the test, even though he almost sacrificed his own son to do it. Sometime later, Abraham's descendants got the same test in the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land. Did they trust God? God gave them plenty of chances, and they failed plenty of times. Now, I, for one, was not surprised by this. There's no limit to the number of ways I can show God that things are not going according to plan. For whatever reason, though, God has this habit of standing by people, whether they're living according to plan or not. God calls this grace. I always think of one man when I hear the word grace. Remember when I said that God made people to live in a trusting relationship with him, but how this works in practice is almost always different? This guy is the almost. This guy was the one God went so far as to call from heaven at his baptism and say, This is my son, the beloved, and I am so pleased with him. God wanted him checked out thoroughly to see if the title, beloved son, was the right fit for him. Since he was God's son, it would have been a conflict of interest for God to test him himself. So God's spirit led him out into that same wilderness where the Israelites had failed the test and brought him to me. I gave him 40 days to prepare. And when I saw he spent the time fasting, I thought, 
This is going to be a walk in the park. Being not just the son of God, but also a child of humanity, I knew what my first move was. If you're the son of God, change these stones here into loaves of bread. Now, I could care less about making the guy do a magic trick for me. The real test was whether he would trust God to sustain him or if he would choose to rely on himself instead. So he tells me, no, the scriptures say people need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. Fair enough. He knew that life didn't exist because of bread, whether it was baked or miracled into existence. Life was created and life continued because God said so. I didn't get flustered, though. I moved on and decided to quote some scripture myself. We went to Jerusalem, to the top of the temple, and I said, If you're the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He orders His angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands to keep you from striking your foot on a stone. This was a good trap. Try to make Him show just how much He trusted God. Would His trust blind Him to the fact that as a child of humankind, He too was subject to to those most basic rules God had set up for creation? Would he exploit his prized place as God's son to get himself an exception to that what goes up must come down rule? He pointed out that the scriptures also say, do not put the Lord your God to the test. He knew that God was the one who checked people's faithfulness, not the other way around. Testing God meant you were trying to take his place, like Adam and Eve had tried to do, and, well, we saw how well it worked out for them. So finally I decided to stop beating around the bush. I took him to the peak of a very high mountain. I showed him all the nations of the world in all their glory. I'll give it all to you, I said, if you'll just kneel down and worship me. He knew as well as I did how those kingdoms had treated his family. Invasions, persecutions, massacres. You knew as well as I did how all those kingdoms treated those down and out people who were so close to God's heart. With all the power I was offering, he could have taken revenge and righted all those wrongs to his heart's content. I actually thought I had him. How could he say no to the chance to finally get things going according to plan? But he did. He wouldn't put me or anything else in that place in the center of his life where God belongs. And in trusting God to get things going according to plan, rather than trying to play God himself, he knew he'd pass the inspection. So he sent me on my way. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told me. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God. Serve only him. For once, someone lived according to plan and gave other people the credit for living according to plan. I guess what that means for me is that at some point, I'll be out of a job. But in the meantime, I do fully intend to keep poking around to see if people are going to live according to plan. I've had a very long time to get very good at what I do. So I'm sure I'll find some way that each of you is working according to your own plan instead of according to God's. But thankfully for all of you, since God's work on redeeming the world through Jesus' death and resurrection did go according to plan, God can promise you what God had planned for you all along. New life with God now, resurrection life to come. Thanks be to God.